Hello, everyone. What's up? Yes, yes, I'm alive and well. Calm down. Just working hard on other projects. Pretty cool stuff I hope you all get to hear about very soon. In the meanwhile, I've been asked by you many times about my animation process and got various requests to make a making of video. So I thought I'd grace you all with making a little making of video. How do you like that? Well, too bad I'm starting now. So today I'm gonna talk about how I do my lip syncing, as it looks like a popular request. Let me know if you want to see more making of videos in the comments, or just tell me how your day has been. I'm easy. Anyway, this video was made possible for your viewing pleasure thanks to Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers inspiring classes for creative and curious people, which I know you are if you're watching my awesome channel. If you want to learn more about him and get a free two-month premium membership, wait till the end of this video. So let's get started. So okay, as you might or might not know, I make cutout animation. And to do so, I work with Adobe Animate. Adobe? Am I saying that right? Anyway, some of you might know it as Flash. I like using this older version for no good reason other than I'm too lazy to install the newer versions. But honestly, it's basically the same, so this tutorial is good for all. As you can see here, these are my lovely characters from my hit video, Frozen is the New Black. If you hadn't watched it yet, shame on you! But for your sake, it's available to watch on my channel. And I'll add a link in the video descriptions. So one of the things you can notice about these characters, other than being hella cute, is that despite sharing obvious art style similarities, they each have distinctive characteristics to separate them from the rest. For the sake of this video, let's focus on their mouths. While I use a similar template for the mouth, something I'll talk about a little later, I make sure to keep it within their character style. It's not a must, but it helps define the character more, since in my case, their eyes are always little dots, so I can't really use them to convey character. Let's take Ariel, a personal favorite, and see how she's built. Let's double click on her character symbol. As you can see, this is a cutout puppet character, so she's separated to different symbols representing each body limb. You can see them separated into different keyframes in the layers in the timeline as well. Let's take a look inside her head. Same deal, different layers are different face parts. Mouth, eye, brow. Well, we're here to talk about that mouth. Before we can lip sync, we need, well, lips. How many do we need? Which ones do we create? It's flexible, but here is my personal system. So this is my basic template that I use for most of my animated videos. A little mini chart divided to two columns. One has various vowels and consonants to create speech patterns, and the other is moods. We got actions for a, uh, m, o, l, and f. This specific mouth can work for different actions like sh, t, j, g, ch, even k and g. It's pretty versatile and I found it to work just fine. And over here in exile is my discontinued th. I hardly use it anymore since I didn't like the way it looked in my videos. Nowadays I just use this magic mouth instead. It works just as well. Over at the column of moods we have happy, neutral and sad. Happy a, uh, neutral a, uh, sad a, uh, happy m, mm, neutral m. Mm. And to me the neutral m mm works as fine for bad mood as well as most of the time, so I used it there too. Same goes for o, oh, and so on. The point of creating the mouths or lips is to make it work for your personal needs. The rules aren't really set in stone. When you watch different animated videos, shows and movies, you can see that there are many ways to create your slate. For example, as you can see here in my Stranger Things Christmas videos, the characters never show teeth or tongue when they speak, because the classical animated peanuts looked exactly like that. It still works. The key is to make it communicative enough so the audience will understand what you're trying to communicate and create a personal style. So do yourselves a favor and have a basic mouth template you always use. Not only will it keep a constant style, but it'll make your lives so much easier. I use these mouths for most of my characters, but with different little changes. This is Ariel's mouth, but if I wanted her to go easy on the lip gloss... There we go. Now I can use this mouth for a lot of other characters too. Now we're ready to lip sync. Almost. Let's talk about a very useful tool that saved my sanity and how to use it. We 
Would you look at that magnificent bastard? Containing all my lips and an easy to use little tool. Just check out what happens when I press on Ariel's mouth and browse the caddy. I know! So cool! This is Keyframe Caddy. And seriously, if you use Adobe Animate, you need this plugin. You can find it online, and even though I got it a thousand years ago, I remember it being relatively easy to install. So I'm betting it still is. So how do you bring your mouse into Keyframe Caddy? Well, first you make sure that all your lip symbols are neatly sorted in your library. My living room might be a mess, but my flash library? Seamless. So we'll start by creating a few empty keyframes and place each lip symbol on each one of them. We're going to use the onion skin down here because when you do this, you should make sure the symbols are placed on the same spot. As much as you can. You should place all of the symbols on different keyframes, of course, but for the sake of this video example, this amount is enough for us. Let's cut all of these for future paste and create a different symbol in which we will contain all the mouths. Doesn't matter what it has inside right now, we're gonna get inside the symbol and erase it. Now let's paste. Here are our mouths! Let's double click out of the symbol. And as you can see, we need to change the looping option to single frame so it won't play the entire sequence all the time. Now we open the keyframe caddy. In my case, it's under Window and Other Panels. It might be different in your Animate software. We click on our main mouth symbol, press Load Thumbnails, and voila! We got ourselves an amazing, helpful tool. Yes, we are ready! You made it! You're about to lip sync. Buckle up, because this is the real deal and it takes some time. So here's Ariel again, waiting to be synced. Let's see the final product before getting into it. Oh, it's just like the castle you've always dreamed of. Okay, let's see how that looks inside. Double click on the symbol. You can see the animation of the different limbs here. Oh, it's just like the castle you've always dreamed of. Double click again on her head. Let's see inside. You can see the mouth layer with all those little keyframes. Oh, it's just like the castle you've always dreamed of. When you go over to the timeline slowly, you can see each keyframe has a different mouth movement. Let's go over how I did that. So like I showed you earlier, we open keyframe caddy. Before we load the mouths into the caddy, a small mention as for sound in the timeline. You can see I opened a sound layer with my edited video sound already in it. What I did is upload the soundtrack to the software library and drag it into the workspace while staying on the chosen music layer. And it's there. So let's get started. Oh, it's just like the castle you've always dreamed of. To make things easier, let's lock every other layer but the mouth layer. It's here where we create the lip sync. Let's load the caddy. Now our job is to listen to what she says and choose the mouth movements accordingly. So our first sound is an O. So we'll choose the O sound movement. Ariel is pretty happy here, so we'll go with the happy mouse, of course. As you drag the timeline and listen, you replace those mouth symbols accordingly. T should go in here now. The T forms into J, so we'll keep the same symbol since it sounds familiar. Our next sound is a, uh, so we'll choose a happy a uh symbol. And so on. Basically, when you lip sync according to sound, you should perk up those ears and follow your gut feeling. There aren't really specific rules here, as long as the character seems to align with the soundtrack. The most important thing is to communicate to the audience that this is the character talking. Basically witchcraft. So as long as you manage to keep that illusion, the number of mouths and how you place them don't matter all that much. If you convince everyone your character is real, you're golden. Alright, let's play the video and see how we did with the basic thinking. Oh, it's just like the castle you've always dreamed of. Looks good, but I think I'll drag all the animation one frame backwards. Oh, it's just like the castle you've always dreamed of. Yeah, feels a little better. So you might have noticed this kind of lip syncing looks a little different than my usual lip syncing. That's because there's a very specific way I style my lip syncing. So let's talk a little bit about what that means and what that might mean for you.
This is what my final timeline looks like. Let's look back at our basic animation from the previous page and play that versus the final one. Oh, it's just like the castle you've always dreamed of. Oh, it's just like the castle you've always dreamed of. You can tell the second one is way smoother and less staccato -y in movement. I do that by using motion twins and add more keyframes with subtle animation changes of the mouths. Let's see an example. The sound transitions here from O to O, so I'll make another keyframe to resize the mouth and make an O shape. Then I create a classic motion tween between the keyframes. I like adding a little ease out to give some flavor. Oh. Much smoother now. E sound. Let's add one keyframe here and change up the mouth in the same way. The T here transitions to G, so we'll give it a nice long motion tween between keyframes. Oh, it's That's nice. Some movements don't require such stylizing, some do. It's really a matter of flavor and feeling the animation. I use this method all throughout my lip syncing process till it reaches this outcome. Yeah, it's a bit of a hassle, but I like how it looks and honestly, it's my favorite part of animating. My styling aligns accordingly if the character has more complex facial features. For example, if you look at this character, Newt from Fantastic Beasts, Eddie Redmayne has a very specific look that centers around his mouth area. So you can see in addition to his mouth, I've also created this shadow and this chin to help identify the character better. Unfortunately, it sort of also triples the lip syncing job, but eh, it's a living. Let's let Newt speak so you can see his movements. I'm so happy I could make it back to New York for Christmas. Uh now, let's hide all the layers but the chin so you can see how it moves when he speaks. I'm so happy I could make it back to New York for Christmas. Uh now, let's hear the same with the cheek shadow. I'm so happy I could make it back to New York for Christmas. Uh Yup, bet you respect me a lot more now, huh? Let's see another example with Tony Stark. Okay, buddy, where am I, who are you, and what's going on? Tony has the case of the facial hair, so I made a whole other symbol for his little chin beard, and one for his mustache. See what happens when I hide everything but the mustache. Okay, buddy, where am I, who are you, and what's going on? Since the top of the mustache can never move, I don't move it rather than resize it according to how the mouth below changes. The main thing to remember about the stylizing part is that really it's where your own personal style shines. You can choose to have simple mouth movements, broad mouth movements, have the chin move, not have the chin move. It's really your playground to play in and add a personal flavor to. I wanted to show you how I established my style so you can either take an example from it or disregard it completely. Basically, have fun with it. So I hope this tutorial taught you something new, gave you some inspiration, or just quench your thirst for hearing my lovely voice and my weird accent. If watching this video inspired you to learn more about how the animation process works, Skillshare has a ton of animated classes for you to explore. Whether you're a pro, like me and four-time Oscar-winning Bong Joon-ho, or just a beginner, all the classes on Skillshare are available to watch in your own schedule. Members get unlimited access to thousands of seriously great classes with hand-on projects and feedback from a community of millions of people, just like you, and me, and Bong Joon-ho. I'm not sure he's actually there, but he, he should be. All the videos are all short and concise, which means you can discover all the new knowledge without putting your life on hold. And without spending too much of your hard-earned cash, too. Because an annual membership is less than $10 a month, and it's about to get even cheaper. The first 500 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership, so you can explore your own creativity. I recommend Simple Character Lip Sync by Fraser Davidson. It's a quick-paced, nine-lesson class that is just a bit over an hour altogether. This class will walk you through the entire process of making an animated character talk using Illustrator and After Effects.
In this class, you'll actually create your own character and be able to upload and share it with other students to get feedback. Also, check out the teacher's other class where he breaks down simple character animation, so by the end of them both, you can have your own walking, talking, animated character. Thanks for watching!